Welcome to the Two Can Talks podcast brought to you by Kickstart Collective. Join us as we talk to local Wilmington business owners about what has led to their successes, challenges, and more. No question is off limits as we bounce from topic to topic. And this podcast is brought to you by Kickstart Studios. Kickstart Studios is Wilmington's newest video podcast studio. Equipped with multiple camera angles and an in-house producer, creating a high quality video podcast has never been easier. Don't let the tech and gear learning curve hold you back from jumping into podcasting or created video content any longer. Our team takes care of it all for you so you can focus on the message you wanna share. You simply show up, record, and receive the final product. No more wasting time setting it up and breaking down the gear, setting up lights, or doing sound checks on your own. Our in-house producer will have everything set up and ready to go for you. So check us out at Kickstart Studios. Welcome to Two Can Talks. I'm so excited to have you on. I think we're going to have a fun episode talking about all the things that you're doing. And I also hope and I think you'll have some good stories, maybe. If not, we'll mix them up. There's always a story. There's always a story. Um, so Brittany, Brit and Joy Co., you are the chief humanity officer. Mm-hmm. And is there another? I feel like there's another Just one. Just founder. Yeah. Founder. Yeah. Love it. Perfect. You know, all the things. All the things. It all is the, all me. All the hats. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you have all the titles. We could have That's know, right. named anything and it would have been you. Right. And yeah. I come from big family, so I kind of answered to anything yeah. already. So it's just perfect. Goes with it. Awesome. I love it. We can just yell out different uh, things. <laughs> I know. We'll just go for it. Chances are I'll turn my head. <laughs> like me? Me? Who? Um, so yeah, I don't know. If you want to give us a quick overview, we'll definitely dive into the weeds of what all you do. But if you want to give us a quick overview of what you do and the business, that would be awesome. Yeah. So Brit Joy & Co. is a growth and culture strategy firm. So what I do is I work with companies to come in and apply a level of human focus to their growth and culture strategy. Cool. So um, it can be spatially, it can be tweaks to language or process, um, but is really just an integrated focus um, that provides like a, just a layer of humanity that yeah. has sort of been missing in the workplace. Yeah, just probably a little bit. Um, <laughs> do you, are your clients like probably more on the corporate side? Is it like larger corporations, midsize, a little bit of both? Yeah. So corporate America is definitely the focus right now. My client base is 50 employees and under. Okay, nice. Um, the goal would be like fortune 300, yeah. several hundred people, um, really go in and break up the bureaucracy. Yeah. Uh, get it girl. <laughs> I know. Get in the weeds. Um, so that's where, that's where the goal is. But right now it's 50 and under, nice. um, mostly local folks. Cool. Um, so, and it mixes from for profits to not for profits, nice. um, software to agriculture and everything in between. So okay. if there's people I'm there. Awesome. I love it. Um, so how long have you, when did you start? Yeah. So December of 2022 is okay. when I created the LLC awesome. and I put it all out there. Love it. Um, for about a year and a half or so before that, I was just sort of helping people that I know that own their own small business or they're incorporated with a nonprofit mm-hmm. that I've either served on a board for or done work with individually otherwise. Um, to sort of like test concept. Yeah. Um, but December of 2022, so we're almost coming up to a year. That's awesome. Um, oh my gosh. Of when I have <laughs> had my own company. I love it. That's I, awesome. You should have a party. I know. <laughs> <laughs> a party for a company that I never actually wanted to have. Yeah, um, girl. What are you talking so about? No we can probably that. dive into that later, right? <laughs> yeah. We'll get there. Um, that's so funny. Um, so yeah, we can, yeah, great segue. We'll jump into the, the cans. Um, so what we'll do for those of you who have never, um, tuned into this lovely podcast is we have these coins. So you will take one, you will drop it anywhere on the board. And if it lands on a one, we'll answer or we'll ask you a more business related question. Mm -hmm. If it lands on a two, it's not a business question. Um, it's anything from life to not like I don't know to it's gripes to, to gripes to community um, all the things luckily you don't have any bad google reviews but if you did oh, there would be one in there that would be more fun. like like mean tweets read mean tweet style but business owners read mean reviews that's always a good time but it's also <laughs> lucky for you you don't have any of those so I it's know. a good thing but kind of a bummer for the podcast um we can so yeah make up something yeah It'd well I'm fun. just like um I'm video. excited about this yeah I was a big price is right I'm gonna drop it um, 
sick day. Oh, yeah. So this whole Plinko board mm-hmm. thing is just you my know. love language. All I'm right. so glad. Can number one. Here we go. Okay. So we're diving right in deep. That is the other thing about this podcast. Since it's all random, it kind of goes out of order sometimes. So we literally bounce around. I like that. Um, so when you have a new client and they're like, oh, crap, we need some help here on mm-hmm. this front. For whatever reason, what is the process of like you going in and being like, yeah, you do. Yeah. Here's how we do this. Yeah. You are so messed up. No, Gosh, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it always starts with an intro call or a meeting. Cool. Um, so I'm mm-hmm. usually meeting with either the department head or the CEO, like whomever mm-hmm. has reached out um, to just kind of talk. And like what's going on yeah. and where are the challenges that you see? A lot of the times, challenges that we perceive are not the challenges that actually are. Mm-hmm. And so allowing people to talk it out, a lot of times these challenges haven't even been voiced out loud, even to mm-hmm. themselves. So this might be the first time that they are hearing these words out loud yeah. about what they think the concerns are. Um, and really just allowing for them to share everything. Like mm-hmm. what are the best parts? What are the worst parts? And Um, coming to a place at the end of that conversation to where we can say like, okay, great. I'm going to recap this. I'm going to tell you what I see, where I think that immediate solutions are, and we'll set up from there. Um, I just think that even for myself, once I start to talk about things out loud, Mm -hmm. that's such a process um, driver for me Yeah, is where I'm like, oh, wait, that's not actually the problem. Like this is the problem. (laughs) So Almost hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third hand. Um, that's cool. Do you, have you seen like a trend? Is it like, they feel like just like the company culture for lack, like, lack of a more specific term is just like not good? Is it like they see a lot of turnover? Is there like a common driver that they're like, that like the light bulb comes on for them that they need some help? Yeah, a lot of it's financial based. Um, cool. So they'll see like, oh God, we spent so much money on staffing this mm-hmm. year. What happened? Yeah. Or you know, our profitability is down, but our revenue was up. Where's the mm. gap there? There's not a line item that's you know, jumping mm. out to me to say like, oh, cost of goods were higher this yeah. year. It's a lot of little things that are adding up. Um, and then some of it's just like underlying tension and they're feeling that and they're like, I don't know where this yeah. is coming from. It's all of a sudden. You're like walk in the room, you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, right. And so once you start to get into it and it's not that there's anything that normally I'm pointing out where yeah. I'm like, let me tell you the yes. most convoluted story. It's normally just a blind spot. Yeah. And it's because we're just too close mm-hmm. to what's happening um, to be able to say like, oh, yeah, that was it. Yeah. Um, so that's been fun to um, just sort of like if there is a th- thread that ties everyone mm-hmm. together, it's you, normally we're too close. Yeah. And there's a blind spot that we just don't see. And we need somebody to be able to point that out for us. Yeah. That's cool. Awesome. All right. Oh, again, do it. Yeah. Yes. Keep on going. Um, occasional. Uh-huh. Oh, I was about to uh-huh. say, occasionally they fly on off. That's right. Just watch your, watch your face. I know. Just a wild one. All right. Straight business. Okay. So you talk about immersive alignment. Yeah. You want to explain what that means? Yeah. <laughs> So um, I started thinking about this process and what it looks like and what's different about what I'm considering when going and talking Mm -hmm. about culture and alignment. And from an employee standpoint, from a customer standpoint, most of the challenge with them comes from the place where what we say and do no longer points back to who Mm -hmm. we say we are. Yeah. And that can be as simple as something if I'm a customer and you email me and you said, I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Yeah. But you really don't lay out what soon is. Mm-hmm. So to me, I'm like, well, she's going to email me back tomorrow. Yeah. But it's actually two weeks. Yeah. We have a difference of understanding. We're mm-hmm. no longer in alignment with the language that we're using. <laughs> and so it. it creates this undercurrent of mistrust and confusion. Yeah. So I thought about this and I'm a very um, like visual, like charismatic mm-hmm. person. So I'm like, okay, so what does it look like if I step into the shoes of the employee? Like, what does it look like if I fully immerse myself in the customer experience. And I'm trying to uncouple as much as I can from, Mm -hmm. you know, the marketing lens or the sales lens or the finance lens. And what does it look like if I'd step into like maybe just as an onlooker or community supporter? And so I just kept doing this number, you know? (laughs) And so if you're listening, I'm just like putting my hands over my head. I'm just like a shampoo. And I was like, I'm immersing myself. Like I want to immerse myself into that position so that we find alignment. Mm. 
And so um, I just sort of coined the term. I mean, it's not trademarked. It. Maybe, maybe you should. I know, maybe I yeah. should. <laughs> you need to hurry up. I think this podcast will be out um, in like two weeks. So <laughs> Right, I know. So it's just really the act of like, how am I fully stepping into this space? And figuring out, like, how does it feel? Yeah. Am I in alignment? And if not, again, back to before, it's like, what are the changes in language or process mm-hmm. so that we can bring that to a place of continuity? Yeah. So. I love that. I know. Um, not on the business side. On the personal side, Luke, my husband, mm-hmm. who is also my business partner, we were having a conversation the other day. And I was, because I was, he said, want to do something? I was like, yeah, whatever. That sounds good. And then a few days later, I was like, hang on, we need to clarify, like, what does this actually mean? And he literally, he was like, it would be like 80, 20 this. And I was like, that's great. But I have no concept of like what 100 is. Mm -hmm. So is this like 20% is like two hours or is that going to be like two weeks? I literally have no idea. Yeah. (laughs) You're like, we just need clear language. I was like, you you know exactly what you're talking about because you're into that deep. I literally have no idea what 80, 20 means. Yeah. And if I was like, okay, cool. What am I signing up for? In six weeks, I'd been like, <laughs> or six months, I'd be like, you said 20, blah, 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 with no realm of like, right, idea of what 100 is. Right. And it was just that baseline of not fully understanding yeah. that can really derail like a simple conversation yeah. with your partner. Yeah. Or your 50 your, actually your business. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. That's funny. I like that. <laughs> well, thanks. I know. So far, it's been good. Anytime I explain it to people, they're like, oh, I get yes. it. And I'm like, I know. Yeah. Um, we it, For whatever reason, we just we have not. Don't, yeah. Unless you're like being very intentional about like right. doing it. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't translate. Yeah. yeah. Very so cool. It's good. All right. Love again? It. Yeah. Let me get you to this side now. Oh, oh, yeah. There we go. Personal let's, questions. Let's see what happens. <sighs> These are always fun and scary. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sometimes they are. Oh, I forgot this was in here, but it's a classic and I can't wait. Okay. What is your spiciest opinion that most people disagree with? Oh my God. And it can be business. It can be, it can be literally be anything. Okay. Spicy opinion. Um, tea is dirty water. Okay. Especially living in the South. Like that's not... A popular like hot tea or like iced tea? Hot tea, tea iced tea, cold Ooh. tea, sweet tea. Ooh. It is okay. dirty water. It might be dirty <laughs> sweet water, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Also, I mean, like clarification, like we are in North Carolina. Yeah. Um, we, we are not Bojangles. in... Right. Like we're not in Asia. Like we're mm. not in like a proper okay. tea yes. environment. Okay. I'm talking about like, yeah. Bojangles sweet tea. Bojangles, which also... Gives you... Look, it instant. tastes like a cigarette. <laughs> and I've never even smoked a cigarette, but I just know in my bones that if oh, I've smoked no. a cigarette, it would be Bojangles sweet tea. Oh, no. I know. I think you're going to break I know. the North Carolina internet with a Spicy this. take. <laughs> Yikes. We should have vetted you. I kidding. know. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, I am not a big fan of hot tea. I will give you that. We drink sweet tea like every night for dinner growing Damn. up. Not anymore. I was like, no, not anymore. No. (laughs) Now, but every now and again, especially like the places that have like the little pellet ice. Oh yeah. That was sweet tea. Mm -hmm. I'm like probably like once a year. I'm like, I need this. Yeah. But like, I immediately just feel like sugar, like that thick, like syrup, like Mm -hmm. running through my veins. Mm -hmm. Um, Diapetes. Okay. Well, fun fact. Dirty water. I know. Tea is dirty water, people. <laughs> and all the people that are diehard Bojangles. I know. Fans. I'm sorry, y'all. That was Enjoy your... So spicy. Oh! <laughs> it was so spicy, we went back for another. Yeah, it's like, um, try again. Oh, yeah, try again, lady. Oh, gosh. Um, okay. Do you have any funny company culture, good or bad, going into a client situation, stories that you can share on the internet? Oh, of course. Great. Love it. Let's Um, do it. I was working with the company and we were just like, okay, let's just go broad. Like, let's just go an overview on your website. Went through all the copy, da, 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 da. And I was like, okay, we're just going to, like, one final look through. Like, mm-hmm. if I'm immersing myself yeah. as somebody who is curious, I don't know anything about this company. I don't know where they're located. I've never met them at a conference. What does this look like? There was no phone number on the website. Mm-hmm. So I now go into this room with people who are, like, 
leaps and bounds smarter than me. Yeah. Um, we're talking about like we would never even be in like the same <laughs> class. Like, you know, it's just it's one of those things where um, it's a whole legally blonde situation mm-hmm. where you're like, what? Like, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so we're going through the information. I go, also, guys, did you know you don't have a phone number on your website? And they were like, what? <laughs> and I was like, I mean, honestly, how do people contact you? Yeah. And they're like, I don't know. We've never considered that. And it's like these people who have built some of the most sophisticated yeah. systems for, for some of the most sophisticated industries had no way to contact them. Yeah. And they were like, Ugh. I was like, it's okay. It's a blind spot. Yeah. I'm like, it is a blind spot. And the same way. Luckily, um, that's an easy one to fix. Easy yeah. one to fix. Right. <laughs> um, also, like being with a guy in his business and I was saying, you know, using somebody's name is like scientifically, one of the sweetest sounds that we hear. Like yeah. our brain lights up in a way that it won't for any other type of name to yeah. be called. Um, so if we want to be intentional with customers, the easiest way you can do that is just use their name. Yeah. It's like, well, we do that. And I was like, okay, great, let's watch. And so yeah. we sat back and not a single person's name was used and he's <laughs> mortified. Oh. And I'm like, it's fine. Yeah. Like it's not, this is not good or bad. Like this is just, this is the blind yeah. spot. Um. So, I mean, I think it's funny. It's more of like, isn't this funny how human we are? Um, It's not like a mortifying situation. No, Um, It's not like making people read bad business reviews. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Or like, you know, like a bodily function situation. Um, But I guess maybe endearing is probably the better way to say that. It's just so endearing to be like, look, we are all people. We are all messing up every day. We just need people to guide us back to it. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of the purpose of my work. So I love it. All good. Okay. Last one. Let's do it. Business. Back to the biz. Ooh, I get to pick. Um, okay. I don't know if we, let's see. We'll dive into it. Um, so how did you get into your current line of work? How did you get here? It's so funny because I was thinking about this the other day. Just of like, it's only been a year Mm -hmm. since I've put this out. And a year ago, I would have sort of danced around this and been like, well, I don't know. It just sort of came to me and I don't want to step on toes. And and I would just say like today, answering that question, like in the most honest sense, it was the refusal for me to accept lip service, Mm -hmm. like to accept just the canned language that was being provided to me yeah. about why things felt wrong. Um, and that led me to research and that led me to curiosity and that led me to, you know, trying this out and yeah. that, you know, so on and so forth. And so it's like, and the most honest place, it was the refusal to accept and just settle on a canned response to something that didn't feel right yeah. and then turned out the research didn't support yeah. and so on and so forth. So that's cool. I know. I love it. Keep pushing friends. Do it. Um, I think we have time if you want to do like, we can do like two more. Okay. See um, what happens. I like it. We'll go from the top. This is such like a great tribute now that Bob's gone. I know. I know. RIP. Sorry, man. <laughs> personal question here we go here we go what is your favorite local go-to place for it can be whatever it can be food it can be drinks it can be fun it can be whatever your fave well what comes to mind so I'm from Wilmington yes um and that's sort of interesting in and of itself because mm-hmm. not a lot of people are from here which is fine it's beautiful yes. you guys come enjoy the space I yeah. hope you bring something cool to it don't just come and suck yeah um <laughs> don't suck but um fun fact I worked at Flame and Amy's. Yes. Um, so when it first opened, um, mm-hmm. my uncle owned the restaurant that was there before. Aww. And so I helped them open the restaurant. Um, That's so cool. And helped them paint the flames that are on the <laughs> inside of the wall. Like the owners oh were sort gosh. of like second parents to me. Um, so Flame and Amy's remains my favorite, you know, burrito style, mm-hmm. not quite Mexican type of food. So anytime... Favorite burrito? Oh, um, fajita burrito. I've never had that one. Um, I usually go tie me up or a big jerk. Oh, I do love a tie me up. Mm. I like the tie me up in a bowl, mm. like without the wrap. Yeah. For whatever reason, the flour tortilla. Okay. 
Um, throws it off. I yeah, can see that. Throws it off. Yeah. Um, but I do love, they have like the taco Mexicana. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do it with pulled pork and it's so good. So good. Um, we almost got flaming enemies for dinner last night. Oh, like my kids, they call it, my kids call it chips and salsa. They're like, can we go to chips and salsa? I'm like, yeah, sure. Absolutely. If you're getting the pineapple jalapeno salsa. That's right. That's right. So, um, yes, if you are new to Wilmington or if maybe you just have not tried it for whatever reason. Good whatever Flaming crazy reason. I know. It really is so good. It I is. I love it. It's my fave. All right. This is like a good mix. I it feel like is. we're getting a good volley yeah. of business and personal. Okay. Follow up essentially from that question. So this was brought to us, became a regular question after Christiane Jackson Moscow was a guest on this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> okay, Jay. Yes. Um, which I think originally it's actually Blair's question. Okay. Like life question. Yeah. Um, so instead of a spirit animal, mm. what is your spirit food? Oh. Like what food best embodies um, you as a human? So I've listened to your podcast a lot and I know yours is nachos. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> um, and I would sort of double down on that, but do like the trash can nachos. Mm, okay. That come, in it comes bat. in a can. Oh, in the can. Have you seen that? I was thinking street tacos. Um, no. Okay, go. So it comes in like a can. Okay. And it's on a plate and then they lift it up oh. whenever and it like, it all kind of like comes, out. comes out. Um, so it's saying so like it's messy, it's delightful. <laughs> it's kind of a visual <laughs> like experience. You're like, what is happening here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, I love it. It's a big like, you know. I love it or hate it's it. It's a crowd. You're, yeah, I feel like you're a crowd pleaser. Yeah. That's definitely, it's an experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also kind of an introvert maybe a little bit. Yeah. You're like all up in that can. Like and I, then once you're, once you're out, you're out. We're out. <laughs> we're here. I RSVP'd yes. We're here to yes. party. Um, mm-hmm. But you would I mind being me... holed up at home? Not at all. No, I would really me. enjoy that yeah. actually. <laughs> That's so funny. I love that. Um, cool. I don't know. What are we at time wise, Joshua? Oh, sweet. Well, we can do one more. Yeah. Before we hit these closing questions. I like it. We're rolling right along. Oh, man. man. This is just all about I know. you. It's like a Which therapy session. I know. We should rename the <laughs> two can talks to therapists. I know. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite thing that comes out of a can? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> is it nachos? That I know. Out of a can? <laughs> Seriously. Um, okay. So I am an 80s baby. Okay. Um, and I, th- I, I feel like I have to preface this with so many things. <laughs> like um, I love the environment and I value our health and all the things. But like, Sounds like <laughs> you're about to die. Um, <laughs> Diet Coke and mm-hmm. hairspray would be mm-hmm. like yep. two very, very close contenders yes. for this. Um, um, we haven't gotten hairspray yet. Look, you're the you're first one to oh, go that route. I love I it. Tell y'all. I, well, so again, North Carolina, it's yes. like a humid swamp. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're not blessed with a certain type of hair, like you yeah. got to lock it in. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I was a competitive dancer. Yeah, so you know, like, yes. you breathe in some fumes. Mm, yeah, like, mm-hmm. it's it's in there. Yeah, um, you're taking that with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I do, I mean, I've, I mean, literally have always had hairspray so in my bathroom since I was, like, a tyke. Favorite brand? Um, Tresemme. Okay. I know. Yeah, classic. Um, I, I could have gone, like, Aquanet, yeah. but I don't know if they still make that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly have no idea. <laughs> um, and I'm not quite fancy enough to go for, like, a... I think I probably use too much of it yeah. to go for an like, actual salon brand. Yes. So I, that is my like argument, but opposite with like shampoo and conditioner. Cause I only wash my hair like two times a week same, tops. Same. So I do spend an unreasonable amount of money yeah. on my shampoo and conditioner, but I'm like, you know what? It lasts for so Forever. long. Like if I was washing my hair every day, probably couldn't afford this lifestyle, right. but I don't. So no. I feel, I feel justified. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, and I, a hairspray is probably what, I mean, and dry shampoo mm-hmm. and yeah. just like anything. Of those, not yeah. really, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, caring too much, which is funny because yes. before I started Brit Joy and Co, I went through this exercise of, you know, what was your essence as a child? Mm. What do you, how would you describe yourself today? And what is like your highest and best self version? Yeah. And I was like, you know, like a lot of it is 
kind of the same. Yeah. Um, but I would really want to look better. <laughs> I was like, I think that means I have to like shower more. <laughs> It's and like actually, I look fine. I just might need to put like a touch of effort. In. I know. I was like, uh, I, was I like, get that. This is yeah. humbling. I yeah. was like, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, the hairspray is mm. is gonna be it's favorite thing that comes out of a can. I mean, yeah. hi. Yeah. 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 All right, one more. Uh, yeah, let's do okay. it. Okay. <laughs> <Whoa! laughs> that went full rogue. <laughs> it's right. hairspray on there. I know. Girl, I know. you were just a party today. I am we a party. did coin this as the party can, so uh, here you are, living up to it. Living up. Are you more productive in the morning or the afternoon? Morning, morning. Yeah, okay. like I would prefer to get up at like four thirty, like kind oh. of early. Okay. Yeah. I I really value <laughs> like that slow time before children yeah, are awake. I get that. Um, my mom was a single mom a lot of our life growing up. Mm. I say a lot formative years. She yeah. got remarried when I was in fifth grade. Um, but she was always the early riser. Yeah. And I always thought she was crazy. Mm-hmm. And then I had kids and a career and I was like, Oh, you need a second. like that's the <laughs> only time that's like truly yours. Yeah. Like I don't have clients calling me. I don't have a child needing me. Like this is my space. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely mornings. morning. Do you, because you do have kids. Do you feel like you use that morning time to like chill and like reset and it's like your time? Or are you like trying to be, are you like getting into productive? Are you like, I'm setting my day up with a second for myself mm-hmm. that leads into like, I can function the rest of this day yeah. successfully? Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's totally blocked off for mine. So nice. if like there's laundry that needs to be done or the dishwasher's clean needs to be unloaded, I don't care. Like, good. Is, I thought you were about to me. say, like, I get this stuff. To, I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound like me time. No, 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 no. It's like, sort of like, it's just that time that I've blocked off where I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. Like, you guys can wake up and you can fix a bowl of cereal. Yeah. Like, I don't need to have muffins for you because I needed my coffee. Yes. I just need to chill. I know. I needed to write an email that would take 15 minutes without it taking 45 yeah. For two hours because yeah. you guys because someone's yelling at me. I know. <laughs> so abusive, you kids. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Um, yeah. that's good. I hate mornings. Um, but when we just had one kid, which is probably more of a reason I should get up early, I was like starting to get to where it was like, well, he was sleeping a little bit later, mm-hmm. and so I would get up early, and it was so nice. But now that kid wakes up at like six fifteen, and I'm like, dude, he is Too he much. can like get his own snack and go watch a show. So like I am like, whatever, I guess I'll sleep now. Yeah, but no, I I think that is important. Were you always afternoons growing up? Yeah, were like, your parents like that too? Do you remember? Mm, I don't think so. But like, if I could work from like two p.m. until like eight p.m. Yeah. I hope that would be like your spot. Maybe like one because I have need to be more hours. But right. yeah, if I could like crank it out and like work, like take a dinner break instead of a lunch break, I think I would thrive. But that doesn't work because I also do want to see my kids. Yeah. You know, I yeah, do yeah. like them. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I know. Food for thought. I know. Well, I think it <laughs> takes all kinds. It does. Because if everybody was up at 4 a.m., then it just would not be the solitude. And if no. everybody was working till 8, you wouldn't find the solitude. No. So. Yeah. Find your pocket. Yes. Figure it Moral out. Moral story. <laughs> Find your pocket. Um, cool. Well, is there, I feel like we did a lot of personal questions. Mm-hmm. Um, on the business side, is there anything else from like what you actually like do for clients mm-hmm. um, that you want to share? Most of our like audience is business owners. Probably I would say lean a little bit more towards small business, mm-hmm. but um, just like as a business owner, here are just some like golden things they yeah. need to know. Yeah. I think um, most people know that culture and vision is important for their company. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what we don't focus enough on is just using clear language for it. So mm-hmm. um, it's great to have beautiful words, but if it doesn't yeah. translate to people's understanding, like what's it for? Yeah. Um, I think a good practice for business owners, um, a good practical thing is to try and do like an immersive alignment exercise. Um, be your own customer. So if you 
can do it from, you know, a retail standpoint, you know, walk in and Mm -hmm. see it with new eyes. Like, is this easy to talk to somebody? Do I have an immediate connection with anyone? Is it difficult to navigate? Same thing with like your website Mm -hmm. or with any other type of service. So try and do as much uncoupling as you can to have the experience as the customer. I think that gives you a lens Mm -hmm. to see. Um, And I think finally it would just be like, we all have blind spots. Yeah. Um, The biggest challenge that you have is business owners who do not want to be receptive to the fact that we're all humans yeah. and we're, none of us are ever going to get this perfect. Yeah. Um, and to be able to know and get that feedback from people, mm-hmm. um, in a way that doesn't feel personal yeah. and that's hard. Um, yeah. but again, <laughs> stepping into a space of uncoupling mm-hmm. allows for more honest conversations to happen for sure. So that you can see yeah. what you're missing. You got to unattached the yes feelings, just I know bit. and it hurts yeah. I don't want to hear it either but yeah. I mean I go through and I look at my website and I'm like yeah I mean yeah that's a little wordy <laughs> I'm like pull it back Brit you yeah. know um so I mean we all have to do it yes it, updating our own website has been on my to-do list I, I built our website I guess during COVID mm. and then we've updated like create a new landing pages as needed but I'm like I know like right. five things every time. I'm like, I just need to sit down for an hour and do this. Yeah. I'll do it. Um, so it's a good motivation. I know <laughs> that kind of awareness. Yes. Um, it's funny. So, I mean, from a corporate standpoint, um, every day I have people reaching out yeah. saying our company needs this. Yeah. Um, and I think we're at an inflection point from like a corporate mm-hmm. standpoint, um, where we're going to see this being implemented at more of a scale. Yeah. Um, small business owners, like it's tough being a small business owner, but this is something that you really have such an advantage on. Yeah. Um, because it's not that it's not impossible when it's big, but it's certainly easier when it's small yeah. to right size these sort of, mm-hmm. you know, areas that maybe might bring a better alignment for yeah. you and your customers. Um, so small business owners lean into it. Yeah. Um, don't think because you're small, it's not a problem. Yeah. Um, there's can, definitely opportunity. Yeah. If you can get it right before, like you're yes. saying before, it's like a cruise ship. Yeah. Yeah. To. It's like a, if you're a parent with your kids and they're like, you know, trying to teach your kids how to not be picky eaters, mm. they're like, it's mm. much easier <laughs> to do that and to stick to it when they're young than to let them grow and be 13 years old mm-hmm. and be like, well, here's your plate of broccoli. Yeah. It's like, that is a hard angle. <laughs> we were literally, <laughs> before you got here, we, I was telling someone that, for two years straight, I mean, our oldest is only five, but for your lunch and or dinner every single day for two years, he had a pepperoni, piece of pepperoni pizza or a cheese quesadilla. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, kid, no wonder your stomach hurts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so finally um, we were like, we did like, I bought the course. I did the whole thing of you? like, I don't know, was probably could use common sense, but I was like, I don't know what to do. Um, it's hard. Yeah. To like slowly start. Right. So I start putting a strawberry yeah, on your plate yeah. and then I start doing this. Yeah. And yeah. So, but now he's great. His favorite food is steak. Um, I love this yeah. kid. He's off the other day. <laughs> this should come with a disclaimer, but the other day we got C Street and he wanted a cheese quesadilla. So I got his steak on the side oh. so that the baby could you That's know, right. also eat off of that. And I was like, bud, do you want to eat any of your steak? My five-year-old looks at me and goes, is it Wagyu? Stop. I was like, stop. So What good. did you just say? I know. Like, That's yeah. amazing. So he has gotten a lot better at his picky eating. Um, <laughs> but I'm like, why? It's from C Street, bud. Sure. It's not Wagyu. Yeah. I know. It could be if you want. Yeah. <laughs> if you I say you yes. You have to try one bite one time. What, like, who, who do you think you are? That's right. But it, could I just say yes and you would eat it? Like, yeah. Let's, His let's other go. favorite steak is skirt steak. So I was like, not nah, bad. It's probably just skirt steak, you know? That's so sweet. Such a drama. Um, but that was a weird segue. But yes. No. Um, it's all the same. I love it. Um, okay. So what can people expect from you next? You're about to turn one. I know. Business about to turn one. Um, also my eye just keeps watering. So oh, it's okay. I'm just not crying. leaking anything. Okay, good. Um, but more importantly, you're about to turn one. You're about to go into year two of being an official business. Uh-huh. So what 
do you have things planned? Are you, yeah. What's next? So year one, when I was like, I'm going to put this out there, the original plan for success was like, I'm just going to be consistent with spreading the information about me and what Mm -hmm. I think and my methodology and just sort of the curiosities that have led me here and just see how this takes. And if I get a client, great. And if not, like this was still a success because there's a ton of books about corporate culture. Yeah. There's a ton of podcasts. There's a Mm -hmm. ton of articles. Nobody's actually talking about what it looks like to do this work. Um, And so that has been even still like a big curiosity of mine of um, just like, when are we going to get people who are practicing this? Yeah. Is Um, that like, how do I say this? Do you feel like people like talking about it because it's kind of like not trendy, but it's like. Some do people just like talking about it, but they're scared to do the work, so they're just like, "Let me teach it." Yeah. Or do you feel like it's something that is like, or is it a mix of both? Like, it is an industry in the area that's growing, so people are just like, just not the the practice is just not there yet. I think it's easier to talk about it than it is to do it. Yeah. And I think that there is more money to be had Mm -hmm. in terms of like scaling your business than it is to actually do it. So when I said like, I never wanted to be a business owner, I really don't. And I still don't want to be a business owner. Um, I want to, I know, I know, (laughs) Ta-da! um, you know, it's like, I want to like my business model would be to go into a large company, Mm -hmm. build out a team for them that do this work, Mm -hmm. lift out and go to the next. Now that's not scalable you know, in any way. So like I yeah. could scale mm-hmm. by writing a book, by doing yeah. keynotes, by doing workshops, by doing an online course. But for me, I'm like, that does not solve the pervasive issue yeah. of what's facing corporate America. Yeah. And as much as we're like, start your own business, yeah. go girl. Like we need these giants of the industry yeah. And we need them to suck less so that people will stay, specifically so that women will stay. Yeah. Um, and so that's where my focus is. Um, so, I mean, in terms of, like, where does this go next, mm-hmm. I've been really fortunate this year that I've had clients. Yeah. I've had speaking engagements. I've had opportunities to do workshops and win awards and all these beautiful things. Um I think the next step for me is going to be pitching myself. Um, And that feels a little nerve wracking. Um, I mean, it's a big step. It's a big step. And just like, you know, that takes guts to put this out there to Mm -hmm. begin with. Like that takes big guts. Yeah. And then it also takes accepting the realization of what this world looks like in a lot of ways um, and who's in charge and how things get done. Um, and willing to be persistent with that. Yeah. Um, and I, that's going to be a big thing to swallow. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited. You can do it. I know. I feel like, yeah, even like you said, like your year one goal is, was like brand awareness on some right. level for you and like the passion, but like that was already way more successful yes. than just that. Yeah. So Yeah. I, um, I know. I you think it'll it. be good. I know. It'll it's just um yeah, it's it's just taking that next step, mm-hmm. which is always scary, I think, for anything, but yeah. especially whenever you're like, it's just me. Here we go. Here yeah. we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, for sure. Catch me world. Yes. <gasps> right to fly. I know. Um, so it'll be good. I yeah. mean, you guys can all stay a part of the journey. I mean, I'm on the socials, so I love it's it. My name or my company name, so Brittany Joy Fountain or Brit Joy & Co. Um, I mainly post on LinkedIn for the business stuff. As you should. Ah! <laughs> Is we that were- the strategy? Is that, are we doing this? What? <laughs> um, no, it's funny. Our last episode, me and Alyssa, who's our one of our account managers, were talking and we were like, said something about LinkedIn. And I'm like, it is, which I don't know, maybe I like right or wrong probably wrong kind of ignored LinkedIn for a little bit Mm -hmm. but in the past like year it is like so much more I feel like of people like business owner or like Mm -hmm. you like people setting their like selves up as like industry experts and Mm -hmm. content kind of like you saw on Instagram on like the influencer personal level but like 
on the business side. Yeah. It's so much more than just, I don't want to say right. just networking because it is still networking, but like job, job networking. Right. Um, so yeah. I know. Anyways, I love your stuff. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> um, it's I been fun. You. I know. Um, it's been fun. And I mean, I'm, I'm a lot wordier with my posts than like what would be appropriate for the Instagram algorithm. Yeah. Um, but, but LinkedIn likes that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Your, your girl's got thoughts. Yeah. So um, you can do like short, <laughs> quick, thought, like one long post, but like. That's keep right. It skimmable. Uh-huh. Maybe as long as you want, as I, long as someone can skim it. I know. LinkedIn will love you. <laughs> <laughs> love me, please. Show my stuff to everyone. I know. Um, I was listening to a podcast on LinkedIn recently, and I think I need to go back and like write this down, but if you which I don't do this, so I don't have proof, but this is what they, this is what they said. Okay. Um, if you like message someone on LinkedIn and they respond to you or like that level of connection happens and then for the next, I think they said like two weeks, your like regular posts stay like in the top of their feed. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So it's like if they, they pick up on that, like there's actually like an actual, like real connection. Yeah. Then your content is delivered more. Man. Crazy. Gotta get it. Can I be more strategic? I know. These <laughs> hey guys. Hey, check my check my stuff out. Um, well, cool. I feel like you best way to get in touch with you, obviously, social and then social. Your phone numbers on your website. I phone assume. numbers on my website. <laughs> I know. Website is just brittjoy.com. Cool. Um, so call, text, email. Nice. You know, whatever feels good. Cool. Um, love to chat. Love it. And is there any final thoughts you want to leave our listeners with today? Oh. I think I would just say, stay curious, like lean into those things that don't feel good. Keep pressing. Don't accept the lip service. Like just come to a truer place um, of you and your business. And I think that you'll find that people will follow. Um, That's certainly been the case for me and I'm grateful for it. So thank you for having me. Of course. (laughs) Thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Toucan Talks brought to you by Kickstart Collective. If you loved this episode, be sure to subscribe wherever you watch podcasts and follow Kickstart Collective on Instagram at Kickstart Collective.